Hey everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. Here in my hands, I have a brand new style by Envy. This one is called Susie. In the color light blonde, we're gonna check it out right from the box. This wig style was sent to me by Wig Studio One for this review today. You can find it at Wig Studio One. I'll attach the link below this video in the description box. If you click on that link, it'll take you directly to the site where you can take a look at all the colors and the pricing. If you have any questions for us, please let us know by emailing support at wigstudio1.com. Envy Styles are an automatic 30% off at Wig Studio One at checkout, so all you have to do is put it in your cart to see the discount. Envy Susie is one of 10 new styles coming out by Envy for summer 2022. It looks to be like a short little wavy, choppy shag style bob cut. We're gonna check it out. It's in the color light blonde today. And do you notice the difference in the packaging by Envy? A little bit of a new motif here, a solid white box, and then some gold inlays and things on the new logo. It's always good to freshen up your look, right? Even if you're a wig maker. All right. Here's a little care pamphlet. I think these are attached to most um, of the new Envy styles placed right in the box. So it just talks about how to care for the wig, a little bit about the Envy care products, how to store your wigs, and detangle, shampoo, conditioning, and so forth. Now this is not a heat friendly style. This is a regular synthetic by Envy. Okay. New logo carried through their tissue paper here. Very curly by the looks of it, right? Let's denet our style. Tissue papers, silicone pack. Okay, everything looks good so far. I'm not going to do anything to it, but remove the tag. So we can talk about the inside of the cap real quick, and then when I apply it, I can give you an assessment of the fit right away without making any adjustments at first. So this is a completely open cap by Envy. So you'll notice that all along the top there are open wefts, but they're covered by a little bit of a rose lace material there. And then there is a velvet strip right at the front, as well as a hidden weft. That's to help keep it comfortable and secure. And then these little, this little brush of fiber along the hairline will help, it, help give it the most natural look possible. And then there are open ear tabs with lots of fiber sewn into those ear tabs. I love that. That should give us really nice coverage. Following this around then to an extended open wefted nape with strap type adjusters a very densely wefted style. Let's see, there seems to be quite a bit of stretch on it as well. So we're gonna assess the fit. But kind of a no fuss, no muss type of cap here. Okay, so before I do anything, I'm going to apply it and give you some feedback on the fit. And you can see what it looks like before I have even touched it. <laughs> this is the part where New wig wearers may not understand that when you first put it on your head, you know, there may be some initial panic. But experienced wig wearers know that we just need to get in there and make it ours. I can see the potential in a wig as soon as I put it on, even if it doesn't look really good in the initially. Okay, the fit. It fits me pretty good, actually. Um, I don't sense any baggy cap. It doesn't feel like it's rolling around. I am going to make a tiny adjustment uh, to accommodate my petite average circumference. I would call this a perfectly average cap, suitable for 21 and a half to 22 and a half inches in 90% of the cases. Um, of course, I can't guarantee fit. I can only go based on my own circumference and how I, it feels on me. So let's go ahead and do our, do our thing. So I am going to make just a tiny adjustment by pulling in those strap adjusters, okay? And then let's just shake it out. Shake, shake, shake. This is my thing, right? I shake my wigs. 
I, I shake it awake. So I shake it to awake it. These fibers just don't move independently enough. When you first put it on, you noticed how stiff it was. I need to wake it up. Basically asleep in there, in the box. And then I just use my fingers to swirl around at the base to further wake up the fiber. And again, this is open cap, so I don't have to have a parting space. Although it did seem like it was parted a little bit on the right-hand side when I put it on, didn't it? So like right from the factory, it appeared to be a right-hand part. But again, you can move that around. So curls can be chaotic and cantankerous. They're ornery. Okay, so the first thing I do is I situate my ear tabs. They're very flush, nice flush up against the head. My nape is situated. And the last thing I do actually is adjust the front. Okay, so it still wanted to stay in that little bit of a right-hand part there, didn't it? Okay, so until I really start to style it and get to know it a little bit better, this is what we have. So looking at it then, it's a short, wavy, voluminous bob style, and it has a lot of shag elements to it. It feels like there's a little bit of a wedge back and there's a lot of volume. So now I really need to get into this bed of permatease and lift the fiber up and around that bed of permatease. That will help fill in uh, any nesty look at the parting space. It'll set free, further set free the movement. So I'm just gonna use that wide tooth comb here. Gives you a really nice look at that hairline, doesn't it? So what you wanna do though, is go into that hairline and just pull down a few hairs that are right next to the head and then spring the rest of it up around those. And then get into that part, get down into that bed of permatease and sort of lift. And the problem sometimes is, the fiber is so fine and light density up there that it's hard to have enough fiber to move around to obscure completely that parting space. So let's move on to the specs of the style then, the measurements. So that front piece fringe is going to be about five inches. That's, that's exactly five inches based on what I know about my face shape and size. So I'm about six and a half from hairline to chin, so. That's about five inches there, just below my cheekbone into the hollow of my cheek. And then there's an eight inch crown. And that moves down into a four inch nape, forming a little bit of a wedge back here. I can tell it's overlapping, which is cute. And that adds to the voluminous look. There's about a five inch piece there on the sides as well which gives it um, more of a rounded shape overall. Now that this style is really coming to life for me, it does remind me of a couple of styles. The first style it kind of reminds me of is the Ellen Villa's Turn. Uh, the other one is the Henry Margot's Jewels. Jewels is a short little voluminous shag style with some waviness. It really reminds me of that one. And, you know, maybe Sweet Talk Bike Bore might be another one. And I'm sure there are many others. But those are just a few that if you kind of like that short, voluminous shag style, I think you'll really like Susie by Envy. Now it weighs just over three ounces, so about three to three and a half ounces, and is completely open cap like I talked about. There's a lot of permatease to contend with on this style, especially on the top. Crown, a lot right here at the temple, a lot at the back and a lot at the nape. So every square inch of this cap has a lot of that thick pillowy permatease. This is going to help obscure the wefting and sustain this volume that you see here, okay? Is it too much? No, I mean, it's still only three and a half ounces. It doesn't feel too heavy to me. 
I think that the permatease is root put to good use on this style. So this has some really cute modern touches with nice tapered ends to it. And then it has that, like I say, that wedge back with a little bit of a curly wedge going on in the back, helping to deliver lots of volume here. And you can see why just with all this layering, it does give you a little bit of shag elements as well. The density is just an average density. The volume that you see is mostly being done by that thick layer of permatease. So before we move on, let me not forget to talk about this color light blonde. Light blonde is um, kind of a medium beige, and then there's a lot of platinum highlights in it. Uh, sometimes that beige can be warmer than other times, and so you can pick up on a little bit of gold here and there. But for the most part, this is a nice, bright, light blonde. It's unrooted, and I... So let's do some styling for Susie. Um, Susie is coming to life for me. Uh, since I've been swirling around on the permatease, it has a little bit of a looser movement to it. Each one of the, the curls are kind of getting a little more PC, um, which really brings out the shape of the style and helps it settle a bit around the, the eyes and the face. So if you get this style and it seems really stiff to you, I mean, I've had it out of the box less than 10 minutes now, and it's already starting to take shape. Now, I will say that you can see down into the permities from the part, if wherever you part it. So I think you're going to have to use, if you choose a light, unrooted color, you will have to use some strategic styling. Kind of like to pinch together that part a little bit just brings the fiber up and around the part you really don't have to have a part here but the face the hair does need to be divided around the face in some way let's go ahead and try with glasses i have some sunnies here i'll just go ahead and slip those on can't really see much but you can see me <laughs> they fit nicely between the ear and the ear tab um there's a lot of permatease at the temple but it doesn't seem to carry down into the ear tab and that's a nice thin open ear tab so it's not taking up a whole lot of space. I still feel like this would be a really good glasses friendly style. 